Good morning. My name is Jonathan Davis, and I have the pleasure of leading the Connecticut region of the New York City Church. This is a point in our service where we take communion and reflect on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, please look with me in Galatians chapter 5, and I'm going to be reading from the message version in verse 1. It says, Christ has set us free to live a free life. So take your stand. Never again let anyone put a hardness of slavery on you. Now today, uh, very uh, excitingly, in a very special treat, we get to hear from my little sister, Bridget Speckman, who's going to share her testimony and what the cross means to her. I first realized that having ADHD made me different from the people around me when I was in the third grade. I was about nine years old at the time, and I overheard my name from around the corner. So I quickly hid behind the wall, and I overheard my brother talking to his friends. He was saying how he thought I was crazy and how I had to take medication to help treat being crazy. His words. Uh, I remember that day, I just felt really hurt. Uh, from that day on, I would avoid him at school because, not just because I was offended or hurt, but because the looks I would get from him and from his friends. So from that day on, I realized that I was just different from the people around me. And that made me feel hurt. And it made me feel like I couldn't trust people with me. Because if I told them that this one about this one aspect about me, that they would see me as different and not want to talk to me anymore. When you actually have the clinical features of ADHD, it's very different. And in adults, there's a lot of emotional dysregulation going on. They have a harder time tolerating frustration. Um, they may have a lot less patience. It may be a lot harder for them to plan ahead and to mm. organize themselves. So they feel very disorganized and jumbled in their head all the time. And again, this is not just periodically, you've got a busy day or a week. This is something that's persistent, that keeps coming up, that actually does cut into your quality of life. I think the topic of medication has always been when I was young, a controversial one, uh, like I said, having to take crazy pills um, growing up made me feel different from the people around me. And so when I had to take medication, I was on and off it for many years. It was really hard because it was a source of just embarrassment, being young around kids who didn't understand, around adults who didn't understand, which was really hard for me. But. But when I got older, you know, I realized that medication was something that helps people. It's not something people should shy away from. Um, I think the stigma towards medication is really sad because it's helped me a lot in recent victories. You know, being able to stay on task, being able to have a, a job that I love, being able to be one of the top students at my school in my classes. My relationship with my brother, the one from the one who mistreated me before, has definitely gotten better since then. I think we still hit some spots here and there, but it's like now I know he's there for me. You know, when he was a kid, he didn't know either. Just the kind of effects his words had on me, because I was nine at the time and he was eleven. But I think, you know, kids can be mean. I think I had a really rough time forgiving him just because like that affected the way I saw myself for a really long time. But it's not just a problem for kids. About four to five percent of the US adults of US adults have it, and that's about eight million people. ADHD has never been an easy topic to talk about with different people, even with friends and family. I find it easy to talk to people who also go through similar things. My oldest brother, who also struggles with mental health, um, different one from my first story. Uh, he's my go-to guy. You know, he just, he gets it, which is really good. I've had therapists in the past. When I was young, uh, therapy was always like a, a bad stigma, but now it's like, I see it's a way of receiving help, you know, something that we shouldn't fight against. But having a close family member has really helped. By definition, so ADHD is a neurodevelopmental disorder. A person who suffers from that distractibility, that impulsivity, was born that way. It's not a behavioral choice. It's not a result of their parenting. It's not a result of any habits that they might have grown up with. So uh, they came out of the womb with ADHD, 
and it's been with him 24-7 since. When I was a kid, I really gave my mom a hard time because she was the one who wanted me to take medication and she was the one who wanted me to go through therapy. And that was always, like I said, a source of embarrassment, a source of hardship. The thing that got me looked at weird, the thing that people called me freak over. And so I kind of took out my frustration on my mom when I was younger. Uh, I would yell at her, I would refuse to get out of the car. You know, I think I'm definitely glad she did the things she did because she was just trying to help. Um, and I see that now, but it's like, I'm just so, I feel so horrible about the way I just, I treated her. Because she never held it against me. She never made fun of me. She never thought of it as a burden. And she always fought for me. But I think just now I'm really grateful that I had a mom who understood and a mom who fought for me to understand too. Um, I no longer feel alone um, in just my walk with mental health and ADHD. Um, my oldest brother, who also goes through the same things, we talk about it a lot. Um, different peers who are now getting rid of the stigma that was around when I was a kid now are able to openly talk about mental health and how they can get better in their different methods. So I no longer feel alone. I remember the day of my baptism. September 27th, 2015, and the entire day I couldn't stop smiling. I remember my face hurt, and by the end of the day, um, I couldn't sleep that night. I was so excited. You know, more people came out than what I remember, but I think, you know, on that day, it marked for me what the cross would mean to me, which is freedom. Uh, freedom in Christ, freedom in loving who I am, uh, in the way that Jesus sees me. Loving myself the way God loves me. In this freedom that I gained, you know, I'm able to go to God at all times. There's no barrier, there's no appointment, no wait period. You know, God's always there when I need Him. There's a stability that's there that I didn't have before. There's a sense of peace in my heart and in my mind when I'm able to pray and go to my Bible. You know, God's always there for me. It's through this love and through this peace that I'm able to forgive my brother and that I'm able to love him. That I'm able to forgive everyone from my past and love them the way that God now loves me. because I have my value in God. I have my freedom in Christ. Wow, Bridget, that was amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your heart and just being real and vulnerable. Um, I'm so, so, so proud of you. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and go to God in prayer for communion. Uh, Father God, uh, we... Uh, are so grateful to be here, God. So grateful for this opportunity to be in your kingdom. God, I pray, God, that no matter what's going on right now in our lives, God, that we can take this time and remember you. God, that we can remember your son. God, that we can remember the sacrifice of our Lord, Jesus Christ. God, I pray, God, that uh, although we may be hurting or in pain, God, that today, this morning, we can go to you and find healing. God, I love you so much. And I pray all these things in your son, Jesus' holy name. Amen.